rising fibre count is a big issue in telecoms and I'm joined by a man who knows all about it, Alessandro Piri of Prismian. Alessandro, you gave a presentation in the conference today, over 300 people attended and you were talking about a very important project the company undertook in Australia. That's right, Brian. We, what I was describing was a, a sort of a race for a high fibre count that uh, was uh, done in Australia in the, last, um, in the last couple of years where actually the number of fiber in a single cable uh, reached uh, some uh, record uh, overpassing the 2000 fibers which is now again already an old record because we are already talking about uh, the next step. Actually the story was that uh, the need to connect uh, data centers uh, uh, in order to reduce the latency, which is money in the end of the day, uh, was so urgent that the people and the operators there were really ready to spend the right value, uh, of, uh, the right quantity of money to, to reach the target. The interesting part was also that there was sort of a jealousy between uh, the guys, so they wanted to be the first to have the largest cable installed. And this is why we've, we started with the 1728, or the first one, and only a few months later we installed the 2112 to the second one. Uh, the challenges were pretty high because of course you can imagine to make a cable with such fiber count you need to make it right because uh, the density and the high fiber count uh, is an issue that you need to deal with uh, in the other aspect. Yeah, so they're the two main issues I guess. Let's start with the uh, high fiber count. What, what's involved in that? What are the challenges? But first of all, when you do an high fiber count cable, you need to make it right at the first time. Because every time you make a mistake as a, as a manufacturer, you need to, uh, this involves short lengths. Short lengths mean repair. Repair and splicing, and splicing 2000 fiber is not uh, a trivial uh, issue. First, because you need uh, the, con the right connectivity, and second, because you need people and time and, and tools to do it uh, properly and efficiently. Within Prismian, of course, the beauty is that uh, managing the, uh, the complete uh, value chain we produce from the fiber optic, the cable, and as well the connectivity. And this is why, actually, we have some of the products that can be suitable for that, instead uh, of uh, just trying to find a, a solution which is not tailored and not optimized for the, for the task. Uh, and going back to the density side, tell me a bit more about the, the, you know, the issues in, in that area. The density, which is a beauty from one, one end, on the other side uh, is also a necessity, is a need, where in, uh, in structures like uh, urban environment where the ducts are over congested, uh, you need to use the existing one and put as, much, as many fiber as possible within. And this is why also we have a technology developed in, uh, in Prismian UK uh, for the British market first, but which can be exported which is called the overblown, where you really are able to, to install and blow new cables uh, within the duct, which are already pretty busy. Yeah, because obviously no operator wants to completely relay the ground, dig up the ground. They want to make the most of their current investment, don't they? Absolutely. This morning I was listening to a presentation during the, the show and uh, I wasn't aware of the value and I was pretty uh, astonished to read, to listen, that uh, the cost per meter of a trench is in the region of 16 euro, while the cost uh, of a duct is in the region of 0 0.5. So you can imagine if you can put a duct and blow in, uh, the saving is huge. It's just the fact that you need to find a space where already there are many cables to put your little one more. Well, thank you for talking to us. Thank you to you, Brian.